Hey everyone, I'm Richard and recently I've been looking into the capabilities of the Polaris 10 graphics core found in the Radeon RX 480, downclocked to match the specification of the upcoming PlayStation Neo console. It's the same core GPU architecture, the same number of compute units, though of course there are differences in almost everything outside of the GPU. But I wanted to see scalability across resolutions, to see if the Polaris 10 could indeed power a 4K console. And I also wanted to compare it with the Radeon R7265, a sort of PS4 GPU saga. Now it's not a complete match with the older PS4's GPU, but it can easily be tweaked to output the same 1.84 teraflops. Now you can see my full analysis on that elsewhere on the channel, but for now let me stress that this isn't a Neo benchmark but it is indicative on a broad level of the kind of performance the architecture is capable of when processing the same gaming loads. So I really wanted to show you guys my findings with all of the raw data that I accrued during my research. So let's dig into the numbers. Okay, so we're gonna kick off here with Mirror's Edge and we're actually going to do a synchronized move from one base to another here. I can get this accurate to within like 30 frames. And uh, instantly you can see that the target PlayStation 4, which we are actually running at 1080p here rather than the 900p, is actually doing pretty well, well over 60 FPS here. So I may actually have undercooked the settings here. So I guess we could have ramped up everything to high to kind of get us closer to the console level performance there and feature set. But yeah, you can see 1440p is actually a fair amount slower here. And you might wonder why, bearing in mind that the Neo has a 2.3x GPU advantage. Now you have to bear in mind that that's in terms of compute. Memory bandwidth isn't improved so drastically. It's about 218 gigabytes per second on Neo. 176 on the original PS4. So yeah, basically, uh, we're not getting a full scaling of all of the system's capabilities there. And as you can see, 1800p, 4K, they're just a write-off really, nowhere near 60 FPS. Okay, so The Witcher 3, this was actually a really pleasant surprise because 1440p is massively outperforming the original target PS4 spec here. And the knock-on effect of that is that 1800p, which is the kind of 4K surrogate resolution that is actually just a touch slower than the original Target PS4 hardware here. And this is quite a remarkable result, bearing in mind that The Witcher 3 is a really demanding game. And uh, one thing that I should bear in mind is that all of the quality settings here, we actually investigated this when the game first came out. It's kind of like a mixture of medium and high, and we've replicated that here, and that's how we're able to get such strong performance. I mean, even 23 frames per second on the uh, 4K isn't so bad, bearing in mind the complexity of this game. Interesting stuff. So yeah, we're going old school here with Crisis 3, and some good news is that the 1440p performance from our Neo target is actually not bad at all, and it is slightly faster than the 1080p from our PS4 target. So yeah, that's a 76-77% increase in resolution there, and a bit of extra performance too. So yeah, good stuff, and this is an old school game that really doesn't pay too much attention to the strengths of the Radeon hardware. So it's interesting to see the scalability there. But you will note that as we move to the much higher resolutions, uh, 3200 by 1800, the kind of Sony preferred 4K surrogate, and of course full fat 4K, things aren't looking so hot. And yeah, the 4K is well under 30 FPS here, which isn't really that fantastic when we're looking in terms of the average frame rates, of course. But yeah, it's still a fantastic looking game, and I do like to include it in the benchmark suite even now. And I kind of regret that we just don't have a proper next-gen crisis for current-gen platforms. Take a look at Rise, and you kind of see just how fantastic Crytek's technology is and how it really could have moved the franchise on. Still, there we go. Okay, so before Crisis, there was Far Cry, originally developed by Crytek, but obviously Ubisoft are now in control of the franchise. Here is the test sequence for Far Cry Primal, the latest in the series, and we're seeing a slight degradation in performance at 1440p here. Now, based on prior testing uh, with Far Cry Primal, it does kind of like memory bandwidth. And again, I kind of suspect that we're seeing that because we aren't getting scalability in memory bandwidth with Neo, that might be impacting the results somewhat. 
But the interesting thing here is that even on console equivalent settings, the benchmark is still able to produce a 30 FPS performance at 1800p. But again, 4K, it's off the table. Okay, so Grand Theft Auto 5. This is the final segment of the game's testing benchmarking sequence, and it's actually the most demanding area. So it's an interesting workout here. Now, the interesting thing here is that once again, we have set the game to the same quality settings as the console versions. And the interesting thing here is that we actually get excellent average frame rates from our target PS4 hardware, which is running with the same 1.84 teraflops as the actual PS4. And that's quite interesting, but it also kind of highlights how the 30 FPS cap on many console games really disguises the true level of performance that you can actually get from the consoles. They're just looking to produce a more consistent experience, really. But again, good news here for the Neo Target hardware. At 1440p, there's a considerable advantage over our PS4 target. And uh, yeah, if we actually look at 1800p, throughout the entire sequence so far, we have been north of 30 FPS, which is pretty good. And uh, as we move into the final area of the test here, we are hitting around 36, 38 FPS, and we're zeroing in on a 35 average. So yeah, that's kind of not bad at all. But again, native 4K, 3840 by 2160. Uh, yeah, we're considerably under 30 FPS for the most part. 27.6 average thus far, that's not particularly great. Overall though, I think there's potential here. I think that Rockstar could do a pretty good job fairly easily by upgrading this for PlayStation Neo. Okay, so this is Rainbow Six Siege. And this is an interesting one because it's actually rendering at quarter resolution, quarter the stated resolution with 2x MSAA, and then using a really advanced upscale technique to give us the resolutions you're seeing here. And yeah, interesting stuff. The target PS4 hardware obviously is way ahead simply because its native rendering resolution is actually really tiny considering, but it still looks really, really good. And yeah, good news though is that the average is on 1440p, uh, well above the 60 FPS required for the title, 1800p, a bit below. But again, even at 4K, which would actually be using a native 1080p frame buffer, performance just isn't really good enough to match the original PS4 title. Okay, so we're gonna round off with Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now these initial benchmarks here are just from the first segment and you'll note that they do drop pretty quickly. But 60 FPS at console equivalent settings on our target PS4 hardware, this kind of bodes well for the upcoming port that's arriving this October. And yeah, more good news, the 1440p benchmark is looking pretty good. And uh, in actual fact, you'll note that once again, the 1800p metric isn't so bad whatsoever. I mean, obviously it's a fair bit behind the target PS4's 1080, but it's still highly playable. Yeah, we are dropping just a touch beneath 30 FPS in some areas, but it's looking pretty solid overall. And uh, yeah, 30 FPS cap on that, consistent performance, it would be quite impressive, I think. But 4K though, yeah, once again, we're looking in pretty poor shape there. Uh, 24, 26 FPS in this geothermal valley area, that isn't particularly impressive. And across the whole benchmark, which includes that really high frame rate area at the beginning, 26 FPS. So yeah, once again, 4K off the table. Okay then, so there you go. Seven games, multiple resolutions, two Radeon hardware architectures. It's fascinating stuff. Now this is in no way supposed to be a definitive NEO benchmark, but it gives us some idea of the GPU power that NEO developers have on tap and the challenges they may face in supporting higher resolution screens. Uh, so don't forget to check out my video with the full analysis elsewhere on the channel, but for now do like and subscribe to support our work and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.